Hello, everybody. In this video, we're going to look at addressing and protocols with a walkthrough of code.org's Unit 2, Lesson 3. If you're only looking for the review questions, please skip ahead to 650. This is the code.org walkthrough for this lesson. I am going to reverse the order and show the video first and explain some of the stuff in the video. Link to this video is in the description below or else it's in the upper right. First important concept is that of the protocol. A protocol is a well-known set of rules and standards that if all parties agree to use it, will allow them to communicate without trouble. So protocols are rules and standards. That's what they are. And as far as why they are, this is because in order for a new technology to use the internet in some fashion, it just needs to know which protocols to work with. So for instance, this Mac, this PC, and this PlayStation, if they all follow the protocols, they can all talk with each other. The last question we need to ask about protocols is this. Is anybody in charge of the internet? The honest answer is, well, nobody. And it may be another answer is everybody. So there's your answer. Protocols are not decided by Uncle Sam, Google, or the Illuminati. Protocols are open and decided by the people who use the internet. They can take our lives, but they can never take our freedom. So there is a good chance you'll see a question on protocols on the APCSP exam. And that's what you need to know. A real life example of protocols is driving. So there are rules in driving. Any type of car can drive as long as it follows the rules. But if you don't follow the rules, then there is trouble. Next up, the video mentions one particular protocol and it's called the internet protocol, IP for short. And it forms part of one of the most important protocols used in internet communication, simply called the internet protocol or IP. We'll go more into detail about this in about two seconds. Next, we want to look at what an IP address is. All the different devices on the internet have unique addresses. An address on the internet is just a number, similar to a phone number or a sort of street address that's unique to each computer or device at the edge of the network. So the IP address is going to be a unique address. You could also think of it like a name that nobody else has. So the concept is similar to student IDs, social security numbers, and that kind of thing. The IP address is no longer on the APCSB exam, but I'm going to use it in about a second to show IP, the internet protocol. The last major concept I want to go over is the idea that the internet is scalable. So all that means is that it grows easily. This is something that shows up on the AP exam. We saw with protocols, protocols make it easy to scale because I can add as many things as I want and all I have to do is follow the rules. We saw before that the internet is fault tolerant and redundant, and this also makes it easy to scale. You could probably imagine how unscalable it would be if the whole thing came crashing down if one device failed. When you have 8 billion devices, this would be super bad for scalability. So the internet being redundant and fault tolerant helps it scale. In the video, they talk about IP addresses being organized in a hierarchy. This is kind of like how we organize things in a dictionary, a word dictionary. We organize things alphabetically, which makes it easy to find words. If we didn't do that, it would be impossible to find words once we had a lot of words to find. And IP addresses being organized hierarchically is the same idea. So here are three examples of the internet being scalable. Again, it just means it can grow to large numbers and it is a topic that's on the APCSP exam. So here we are with the internet simulator one more time. The reason we're doing this simulation is to show why we need protocols. Code.org has you do this over, I think 35 minutes or something like that. I don't think it takes that long. I think I could show it to you in about three or four minutes. So here we go. The idea here is, is we're going to get into groups and we're going to try to hang out with each person in that group. So we need to make those arrangements. Maximum of one per day. So that's the assignment. I'm going to join my sections. Here I have three separate tabs open. And in all three tabs, I'm going to join room one. Okay, so here I am in tab one. And again, I need to make arrangements to hang out with all the others. So let me send a message. Here's the message that went out. Now I'm in tab two, I got that message. And tab three got that message as well. So tab two gets this message. And if you look, tab two has no idea who it's for or who it's from. So tab two sends out a follow-up message. Tab three gets that, tab one gets that. Tab three sees both these messages and is confused. So anyway, code.org wants you to play with this and realize that this is not going to work. So I'm sure you can figure out what's next. I need to say who I am. So the message gets sent out. And when tab two gets this message, tab two sees that the message is from tab one and it sees that it's for tab two. So now tab two is happy and it can reply. And it's gonna reply with the same rule, meaning that the message will include the sender and the receiver. Finally, we end up back in tab one. We see that tab one has received a message that it can understand from tab two and now it's happy. And this is pretty much how the whole thing works. 
So all of that was to illustrate how internet protocol works or how one aspect of internet protocol works. Protocol again is rules and standards. And the rule that we showed was that every message needs to include the source IP address and destination IP address. And these protocols are open. They're not made up by the government or the UN or whatever conspiracy theory you may have. So I hope that makes it sink in because probably you'll have a question on protocols on the AP exam. Checking out the code.org questions. Pick two statements that are true. A, each device or computer on the internet is assigned a unique IP address. We found out this is true, so this is true. B, IP is a secret protocol, so right away we know that's not true. IP is an open protocol, so B is not true. C, each network on the internet uses its own protocol. Again, right away we know that's not true. They use open protocols that are shared by all. D, D contradicts A, each computing device on the internet has its own IP address, so D is false. And E, we just spent a lot of time showing this aspect of internet protocol. So E is true. And the last question is to describe how the internet protocol allows devices to easily connect and communicate. So the key here is easily connect and communicate. And when you see that, you think protocol, rules and standards for all the devices. And some of these protocols, some of these rules are that the sender and receiver IP address is part of the message. And another is that everything is converted into binary, including the IP address. So that's one possible answer. Here are some practice questions. So this format where there's three questions and they ask you which is true is a common format. So I'm going to do four of these questions now. All right, question one, which are true? One, internet protocols ensure fair and equitable distribution of resources on the internet. Two, internet protocols are controlled by the US government. And three, internet protocols allow people with different brands of devices to connect with each other. So whenever you see a question with protocols, there's only two things that really matter. One is that the protocols are open and two has to do with standards. Standards allow everybody to connect easily with each other, no matter what equipment or software they're using. And it allows the internet to scale or to grow easily. And everything else is going to be nonsense or mumbo jumbo. So for one, it has nothing to do with connecting or scaling. Fair and equitable distribution may be desirable, but it has nothing to do with protocols. So that's not true. Two, controlled by the US government. Because protocols are open, they are not controlled by the US government or Google or anybody else. Three, allows people with different brands of devices to connect with each other. So this is true. It is why we have protocols. So three is true. So only three is true. And our answer is B. Number two, same kind of question, which is or are true? One, open protocols means that computer programs are programmed in open source computing languages. This is not true. You can program in any language that you like, just as your hardware can be any type that it likes. But how it connects, it's got to connect with certain standards and protocols. So kind of tricky, but still not true. Two, internet companies must coordinate their equipment so that they are able to send messages to each other. Again, this is not true and it's related to one. They need to connect in certain ways, but the equipment can be different. Three, internet protocols, because they are open, cannot be used in proprietary software. Again, that is not true. Protocols, again, are all about making it easy for anybody to connect with anybody else. So it makes no sense that you would restrict their use. So three is not true. So three is not true, and the answer here is D, none of the above. Question three, same type of question. Number one, open protocols help reduce the transmission of computer viruses. This is not true. Remember, protocols are here to help you connect easily and make it easy to scale, and everything else is nonsense. So this is not true. Two, internet protocols help the internet grow or scale. This is true. It helps the internet scale by making it very easy for computing devices to connect with each other. Three, internet protocols are specific to hardware brands. This is not true. If that were true, it would mean the protocols were decided by companies. And that's not true. Protocols are open. Now they are used by different hardware brands, but they are not decided upon by different hardware brands. So the answer is B, two only. Question four, one more of the same type. One, it is illegal not to use the internet protocol. This is not true. You could do anything you wanted. You wouldn't be able to connect to anybody else, but you can do anything you like. Two, protocols use the most advanced technology available. So what we want to remember here is that protocols are standards that make it easy for everything to connect. Being the advanced or most coolest technology is not said in that explicitly. And if it's not there, it's mumbo jumbo. So it's not true. Now in the real world, at some point, protocols do catch up to more recent technologies. But think about it for a second. If you changed protocols every year, every time something new came out, it would defeat the whole purpose of making it easy for everything to connect with each other because all of your equipment would have to change every few years. Three, fault tolerance, redundancy, protocols enable the internet to scale. This is included in what we need to know about protocols, and this is true. 
So our answer is C3 only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.